Hello and welcome. Checking out next open step on the emulated 486 PC MU or PCM. Uh, open step basically is the precursor to OS X. Um, OS X uh, known for from the uh, Apple Macintosh computers. Um, the thing is that um, it uh, was possible to install it on uh, a regular 486. Now, as I'm not uh, currently in the possession of a 486, but I am in the possession of PCM, I'm actually going to try to install this and check it out on uh, an emulated 486. So here it goes. Okay, so what I've done is I've downloaded Apple Rhapsody Titan and oh, let's turn on the mouse pointer like so. Yeah, it's there. I've downloaded Apple Rhapsody Titan, the developer's release. Uh, there's a boot floppy and a driver floppy and uh, whoops uh, and a data image in the system drive I'm using the system drive and I have configured PCM PCM um, let's show you the configuration um, I've uh, selected an uh, AMI WinBIOS 486 actually I had a board with that uh, BIOS as well. I had a D, an Intel DX4 uh, 486 overdrive uh, CPU and I had an S3 Verge. Um, a Sound Blaster, just a regular Sound Blaster, 16 megabytes of memory. I don't think it's uh, prudent to have more than that. Uh, just have a three and a quarter inch and no other floppy drive. Uh, Microsoft serial mouse. Uh, so, so that basically is no Voodoo graphics or anything. Uh, it will reset it, and let's save the configuration. And what I need to do is get the boot floppy in place and do a hard reset. Now I will. Yeah, it's, it's a very small window, but yeah, it's booting from the boot floppy. This will actually, and I'm choosing verbose, this actually is very similar to uh, OS X, uh, if you see the output and stuff. And I've never seen this before, so this is actually the first time trying this. So I'm selecting the Engli English language, uh, and I want to install Rhapsody. So it's loading Rhapsody, and if all goes well, it, it will show you a bit of the hardware detection. It's it's a bit more or less plug and play, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a very interesting uh, uh, thing to behold installing something like this. This uh, never was released to the public. This uh, precursor to OS X, and it really makes me wonder because. This actually runs on regular PC hardware. Uh, eventually, I have to install the driver disk. So give that a go and press return. Um, so from the from the start, uh, OS X actually um, was capable of being run on. Uh, 486 or you know Intel machines Intel architecture but I guess the legacy with the uh, Motorola uh, and the uh, Motorola CPUs and the uh, OS 9 OS 8 um, makes made uh, made Apple decide to go for a power PC perhaps um, let me see additional drivers because there's uh, no SCSI adapters, but there is IDE and the top heat drivers. Let's let's do this one. 
but I also want to select the plug and play driver uh, load a driver from the disk because I, I want to have the non plug and play IDE in place as well as the plug and play IDE because uh, it may end up uh, with some issues. Because, like OS 9, OS 8, um, this, the software actually is very keen on all sorts of QSI interfaces, which I don't, don't have on this emulated PCM. Um, additional drivers, additional drivers. Uh, I did select that one, but I want to plug and play. Uh, oh, well, plug and play controller one. Uh, that should be enough and continue without loading additional drivers plug and play support enabled let's see if I can if I can uh, switch to full video mode full screen okay so one to install Rhapsody Install Rhapsody on the hard drive. Advanced installation options. The first in this disk in this list is the startup disk. You can install Rhapsody Essentials on another disk in this list. If you do, Rhapsody will not start up automatically when you're starting. You want to install, yeah, just the one. want to erase the entire disk. Start installing Rhapsody. <laughs> now this, this, I mean, it would have been awesome to be able to try this on one of my systems. And back in the day, I mean, I was all over the place. I, I tried installing, or I did install Linux. I always was busy with Linux and all, you know, building my own distributions, compiling kernels, uh, what have you. Also experimenting with BOS. I may actually give that a go as well on this PCM. Um, um, what else? I've, I've been experimenting with OSX on Intel hardware, you know, Hackintoshes. Uh, was beta testing a lot of the Windows, uh, you know, Windows Longhorn, uh, Windows Chicago, all that kind of stuff. Um, so basically, I'm very familiar with all sorts of operating systems, and this being, you know, basically OpenBSD to some extent, a plug and play version of it, and OS X, probably installing this will not be too difficult, but it's, it's, in, it's interesting to see uh, what, it, what it amounts to. I would love to try this on original hardware. Uh, you know, uh, one of the, the mainstream 486 boards, uh, it, it, will, it will work on there. Um, because BSD did have a lot of hardware support and basically this is based on OpenBSD. So uh, if you look at the, um, if you look at the way the, uh, the way that the folders are uh, implemented, you can actually see that already the structure that you find, system library frameworks, you can actually see that the uh, structure of OS X and, uh, and its folders and its system folders is actually in place. Uh, especially when you're familiar with uh, doing hacking tasks, you, you, you see that basically it's very similar. Um, so for me, <laughs> Um, being used to Hackintosh and, and a real Mac, I mean, I, I do have a real uh, MacBook, um, a MacBook Pro, um, but uh, having installed Hackintoshes on 486 hardware, 
uh, or 486 uh, core to do pension and hardware um, this probably will work unless there's an incompatibility with the emulator but it's it's pretty good so uh, yeah let's see how this uh, finishes I may actually speed this up um, <laughs> because it's it's kind of boring to see a progress bar but, but I kind of kind of interesting this progress bar it's uh, it's equal signs with a larger than sign that moves across a set of dots and it's actually quite fast but yeah the emulated <laughs> CD-ROM is actually quite fast because oh yeah I did attach the CD-ROM to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, emulator as an ISO so yeah, it, it doesn't boot from the CD. Uh, this 486 motherboard is capable, this emulated 486 motherboard is capable of booting from uh, CD-ROM, but this, uh, this system just boots from a boot floppy, loads in the appropriate drivers, pro possibly to, to uh, make it possible to, to just uh, have a better compatibility with uh, with the system and stuff. So the hard disk disk is ready to use as a startup disk to complete installing Rhapsody. Remove the disk from the floppy drive and pre press return. Now I'm not sure if this actually will. Yeah. So I'll eject the drive and go back to the full screen and press return. So the computer is being restarted. I'm not sure if it actually will restart. You may actually see the bio screen and stuff, that which is actually uh, so it's the S3 video card, 16 megabytes of RAM. Uh, do the verbose, so we have more information about. Uh, it's actually quite cool to see this boot. sure if this will continue is, oh. uh, right so this looks very familiar this actually looks very similar to uh, <laughs> to OS, OS X starting up and running a Mac operating system so this is probably some sort of control screen uh, so it, it does see a serial mouse, no audio, uh, but let's see if I can select that. This is probably the, the summary. So let's see if there's any device drivers. So let's see if I can see my S3. There's a lot of hardware, so there's a lot of uh, support for it. S3 generic PCI Explorer. Yeah, I could go for it for that, but okay. So S3 generic PCI display driver. Why not? Add. Um, let's keep that refresh rate, keep that resolution because I'm not sure what that will do to the uh, to the grab. Um, it does have some sort of resource management. You can actually set the addresses, uh, hardware addresses. Um, uh, yourself. <laughs> so then we have the mouse serial port mouse then we have ethernet drivers but there's no ethernet driver installed but you can actually see that there's uh, 
nice selection of hardware support here. SCSI, no, I'm, I'm not using any SCSI driver, so sound. Uh, a Sound Blaster 16, 8, just a Sound Blaster 8, because, yeah, just a regular Sound Blaster. Uh, and it uses DMA channel 1 to 20 and interrupt 5. That's basically how I have set it up uh, in, the, in the BIOS of the hardware. So this is, this is also uh, how this works. Okay, let's, let's select done and save this. So the hardware configuration is saved somewhere. <laughs> and probably the rest of the install, oh wow, <laughs> did you see that, uh, that rotating uh, cursor? That's very OS X like. So I'm just going to select everything, I guess. I guess apart from Japanese, I'm, I have no interest in Japanese, but this is actually the entire package that is installed. Let's press install. Now it's probably going to take some time. Oh look, yeah, there it's, it's copying across. So 28% done. Uh, yeah, so this will probably <laughs> continue. I may actually speed this up because it can be a bit boring. There's a lot of document. Well, let me see what's what's on there. Um, so Rhapsody Essentials, uh, 100 megabytes, documentation, demonstrations, enterprise object, Enterprise Object Developers, Developer Tools, Developer Documents, SAMA Server, Emacs, PDF Files, Developer Software Libraries, and Rhapsody Profile Libraries. <coughs> Is it actually possible to move around this window? Yes, and it multitasks. Interesting. So this was actually intended to be run on 486 machines <coughs> and this being an emulated 486 DX4 this probably is the fastest machine that it will actually run on I'm not sure if it will function on Pentiums but it may not support the, uh, the hardware that's included and uh, I thought it would be cool to just install it on a 486 environment um, yeah, actually the uh, mouse cursor, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm quite a bit of a geek, but it's actually identical to the mouse cursor on OS X and, um, and uh, the earlier Macs. Basically, it's very similar to a Windows mouse cursor. It's, it's a mouse cursor. It's a bit less narrow, I believe, but it's very similar. So there's a lot of stuff being copied over. I think uh, they're in the objects point uh, three or mark three or four. Java is now being installed. And classes are being installed. Now, I do believe that this or its predecessor next, next step, this is open step, actually has um, has a link with Smalltalk. Uh, Smalltalk being an object operated, object, how do you say that? An object oriented um, system, a database system, an OS. This is actually very similar. Uh, and uh, back in at uni, I did work with Smalltalk on a 486 machine and I really was intrigued by it and um, I really I mean I, I learned to program in it uh, make small bits of code uh, a lot of people around me a lot of the students they just didn't understand it really uh, but I did um, being a computer geek uh, I, it came to me quite easily but um, the thing is that I have never seen 
that small talk system ever again and uh, I've been looking for it I mean it must be abandoned where but now but I've yet to spot it and I'm and it and it did run on a uh, well I mean the, the the PCs were booted from a network a novel network I believe um, they were running a version of DOS with novel drivers on top and basically all the educational software uh, ran on those now <coughs> there was another part of the computer lab where um, machines were booting <coughs> a variant of Linux or VAX they were PCs but they uh, were remote clients for a VAX machine uh, things like Gopher ran on there um, this of course is 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 a bit later or around the same time I guess <coughs> so seeing a an OS from that era spring to life on an emulated system on my Core i7 in my game room is actually very interesting uh, and I like the name Rhapsody so well 78% I've managed to just uh, not keep my mouth shut and just waffle on um, and I really am very curious if anyone besides me actually finds this interesting 81% uh, done um, yeah 20, 20 minutes in um, so it's 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 quite a lengthy install I say so it's copying over libraries PowerPC, Intel architecture, 386 architecture, probably just because BSD, OpenBSD is actually um, Intel, it's also an Intel operating system uh, porting over the libraries uh, and just having it run on a regular 486 uh, mainstream motherboard probably worked out fine. Uh, but it, it really makes you wonder why. Um, Apple decided to go the PowerPC route just to stand out from from the PC the gray PC boxes I think I, I think I will try to install another OS that I've been uh, very keen on trying out and that's actually um, <coughs> and that's actually BOS oh look there's this this is very and this is very OS X like the, this rotating wheel. Uh, I, w I believe the message framework is a huge framework uh, and it takes a bit of time to copy. <laughs> Hence the color wheel, which isn't really a color wheel here, it's a grayscale wheel, but it's yeah, it's, it's very interesting to see this running on PC hardware. I really think that if Apple would allow OS X to just run on, you know, run-of-the-mill PC hardware, um, a lot of people would actually uh, move to Mac, to uh, to Apple. Um, <coughs> but the system being available on a limited set of hardware also has its advantages and it has its um, its pull from to the uh, uh, creative <laughs> the creative bits of our world ah install has uh, has been proper make sure there is the disk in the floppy drive and then restart to restart the computer well, I'm very curious what will happen now so Rhapsody developer release 2 restarting the computer I just love these uh, simplistic grayscale uh, computer graphics. Now I'm very curious. I'll just leave the uh, CD in the drive. It, it won't boot from there. Let's do the verbose mode. Wow. So it's very. I mean, uh, if you if you look at if you look at um, if you look at OS X booting, if you look at Linux booting, if you look at a Raspberry Pi booting, you oh, it doesn't like it really doesn't like 
the graphics setting. Hmm. You know, I may have to do this install again, but just select a, a different graphics card uh, or a ge generic video card driver because this isn't doing anything. Ah, oh, fail, fail. Installation. Current reset. I, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's just. Uh, yeah, English language. install so you can actually see that the system basically hovering around a hundred percent makes that my my uh, PC is uh, fast enough to emulate is 486DX400 and uh, yeah this combination this uh, BIOS and Intel chipset is something that this BIOS and Intel chip is actually something that I uh, had back in the day so it's actually quite interesting to just see that this probably would have worked on my system Now I'm just recording this whilst installing this. I'm just checking out, you know, this uh, this bit of OS with uh, with this emulator. And I, re I mean, really, this emulator has been a godsend. Um, and Banco Kian is playing Attack of Titan. Um, right, uh, seven additional drivers, seven. IDE controller, IDE device driver, yeah, plug and play adapter. So uh, load addition, load a drive drive from the disk, and then it has to load in <laughs> all the drivers again. The list of drivers. Now I guess it makes it. It makes it. I mean, it it does allow you to eject um, uh, the floppy and put in a different floppy if it did exist you know without changing any of the original floppy to accept different different drivers so that's actually a good thing um so basic probably this is all been stored in memory seven to list all the drivers now i did see the plus plug and play i really need to check out the plug and play because that made sense plug and play that's one and then without loading additional drivers so and probably it'll okay a uh, pros uh, prosperous prosperous <laughs> I think it, 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 it does uh, okay uh, okay to install flop uh, to install Rhapsody I mean the date is the, the 5th of May and uh, the date is the 5th of May and uh, yeah I want to erase the entire floppy to start installing Rhapsody so it does some partitioning and stuff copying base system okay so the base system is actually copied onto the hard drive so yeah this is this is what we've been looking at before um uh, yeah uh let's let's just wait and see what happens um yeah i think i will select a uh a standard 
uh, a standard uh, as video driver, VGA driver, in order for uh, the system port to work because for some reason it outputs uh, a graphic mode that the emulator just doesn't like the emulated monitor. Now back in the day <laughs> this really would have been an issue because this looks to me like a sort of refresh rate thing that was very incompatible with the output display and I remember installing Linux, Slackware distributions and stuff if you wanted to have anything like um, a, a GUI or a visual display, uh, usually uh, that would be in the guise of um, Motive X Windows. And the settings uh, weren't made by clicking some buttons on a control panel. No, they were made by uh, going into Xconfig, a, fi a configuration file where you had to basically type in the correct settings for your monitor refresh rates and resolutions and stuff and if you manage to get that wrong it could actually kill your monitor <laughs> uh, luckily i've never i've never killed a monitor but i did give a monitor some some nasty jolts <laughs> um, <coughs> some a lot of the computer monitors back then that I used had uh, protection against uh, being driven to extremes. They just, you know, they just displayed a message. Uh, this resolution is not supported. Much like today's uh, TVs and monitors actually display a message about a certain setting or value or output not being uh, supported. But back, back then, yeah, software could really kill <laughs> kill bits of your hardware. Um, I mean, uh, with the first generation of PCs, you really had to park your hard drive before shutting it off or moving it around because the heads would not automatically park themselves. You really had to give a park command. Now, of course, this led to a lot of grief back in the day. So. Um, eventually uh, drives would auto park doing away with you know crash drives uh, due to the fact that people were moving around or shutting down the computers without the drives being parked but yeah uh, <laughs> stuff like that uh, remembering stuff like that tinkering with these old uh, operating systems you know uh, VAX, Linux um, you had a version, you had a bit of software that actually uh, we used uh, on a bulletin board system running on MS-DOS. You actually had a multitasking MS-DOS system. Uh, I totally forgot what it was called now. <laughs> uh, but it ran on 486 machines. It, it made uh, virtual machines available, multiple instances of an MS-DOS operating environment which actually was necessary to be able to um, eject the disk. Okay, let's eject drive A and press return. Yeah, this, this really was how things went back in the day I mean select the uh, the wrong video card and you would there would be no way let me see what happens if you don't do verbose um, select the wrong video card and basically you're, you'd be toast um, because um, <laughs> there's no way to just you know to, to go to some sort of safe mode and um, save mode and select another select another um, select another uh, graphics mode so basically going with VGA probably will be the best thing because a lot of those uh, video cards back in the day they had some sort of Visa VGA BIOS and uh, which would allow for basic VGA settings, often uh, 64480, 
with a 16 or 256 colors, sometimes higher, uh, with help of a Uni Visa, a Uni, v, a Uni VBE <laughs> software solution, but that was only for, for MS DOS. But yeah, I mean, there were a ton of hardware iterations, just like these days, uh, even more actually, because you had a ton of graphics cards, a ton of different graphics cards, and these days, you're basically, there's only two. You know, you have uh, AMD with the uh, Radeon series, the, uh, and you have NVIDIA with the GeForce series, and all other cards are, well, of course you have the uh, Intel built-in graphics, uh, the Intel GPUs on, the, on certain CPUs. I don't think that uh, AMD has built-in GPUs on the new Ryzen chips. They don't, do, do they? No. So basically, uh, and there's only two types of processors these days, I mean Intel and AMD. Um, there used to be a ton of different processor manufacturers back in the day, much like you find now with the AMD, or AMD, with the ARM um, a range of systems. I mean, there's a ton of systems on a chip um, for, for, for mobile computing, also for, for, for uh, all sorts of computing um, uh, that have some sort, some form of ARM, and ARM also moved from 32 to 64-bit computing. There's an ARM in uh, iOS devices. There's an ARM processor in uh, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, many Android devices run on ARM chips, but uh, they also run on Intel chips. Um, Android uh, will run on Intel as well. Uh, iOS <laughs> still doesn't, and uh, I think it might only be a matter of time before iOS runs on uh, uh, runs on uh, x86. Uh, oh, bloody hell! This is taking forever, is it? Um, this is taking longer than before. But oh, look, there's more progress now okay okay let's let's see if I can move to the big screen because that's actually perhaps a bit more interesting uh, okay so let's this is where it went wrong on the other the other time so let's do just a regular default VGA adapter I think that's the safest bet because this, the ch I mean, the chipset that I did select, well, it, it kind of, it kind of crapped out, didn't it? So yeah, let's add that. And let's hope it works now. Color space black and white. Select. Oh, there's there's only black and white. Hmm. Oh well, let's see. Color space black and white, mouse, no internet, the sound blaster. Whoops. And it does detect it at the same thing. So it's done. Save. And now it's <laughs> going to copy all these files again. Uh, so I'll we'll switch off. Oops, the Japanese. The Samba server. Well, yeah, let's let's just install it because you know I'm not sure if if, if not installing any of the uh, software packages will actually result in a system not booting up. Sadly, no color as of yet. But you know, being black and white only is is fine by me. It's grayscale, isn't it? I mean, there's there's quite a few grayscale. I mean, what <laughs> what would make it more compatible in grayscale uh, uh, than uh, just a color? <laughs> I remember the similar thing uh, happening with BOS, where uh, where uh, an unrecognized 
a standard VGA adapter would result in a VGA uh, display that was grayscale, whereas um, a supported graphics card would actually uh, output in, in, in uh, color. <laughs> now this of course is going to take uh, uh, some time. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite boring to go through this, but it seems I managed to get to half, yeah, almost halfway through a second install in only 39 minutes. So, I mean, it's, it's doable. Probably no one is watching me now, uh, which is, I, I could always <coughs> delete this. But I find this interesting. I find this quite interesting. Just very interesting. I mean, it, this used to be cutting edge software, you know, making a huge difference. Uh, forking away from Linux, uh, forking away from Mac OS, like like you know it I mean this really took a huge insight um, and yeah if, if you look at things if you look at things um, Linux or, or Unix basically um, it's all around us it's in a lot of embedded systems. I mean, Android basically is a subset of a virtual machine running on Linux. OS X is also, I mean, it's not, yeah, it's very similar to Linux, but it's running on Unix. Unix and Linux pretty much are, you know, uh, iterations of a similar um, operating system, uh, way of thinking about operating systems and stuff. But yeah, we've been exposed to Linux, Unix based systems all around. I mean, even, even your iPhone is running a version of Unix Linux with a shell on top. And basically this early 90s is where it all started uh, with, the, uh, with, the, uh, with the advent of Linux, Unix and GUIs. Um, I mean, this this really <laughs> might actually look very similar to the old Xerox machine that was actually the first computer system for general use that sported a mouse and a windowing system, very ahead of its time. And uh, yeah, I mean, hardware was incredibly expensive, so being able to just switch between certain displays certain display modes i mean it, with linux in text in text based mode it is possible to jump to through various screens through various uh, terminal terminals uh, which is less well w which is also possible on, on a gui like this and it's a shame that um, that uh, PCM doesn't support network drivers yet, or has a patch into the uh, you know a tunnel or a bridge towards the PC network cards because it would it would be very interesting to to see what you can do with this software on uh, in a network uh, and it is possible to use the uh, com ports and uh, printer ports uh, emulated ports uh, on this computer because those ports are supported uh, and probably there's a way to connect them up to a real port on the host system uh, but yeah, it's 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 limited. I mean, it's just local computing, which is fine. I mean, for a lot of things, um, 
you know, just having the system by itself running the software is good enough. And you can use the host system to get at certain files or certain softwares and use um, a Windows image software or imaging software to just transfer files across. But uh, for things like ch checking out the online capabilities or checking out uh, networking capabilities, expand the, uh, the system's uh, capabilities. I mean, you really need network support, but I think that's very, very, very difficult to implement. And uh, I must say that I'm very, very amazed by the level of quality of this PCM uh, emulator, this PC emulator, because it really does a lot of things really well, really well. Uh, and I mean, I've I've looked at virtual PC, I've looked at VMware, and of course they have a, a wonderful implementation of network hardware and they virtualize, basically they virtualize your host system, uh, which does away with the large bits of emulation because this, this, this emulator it emulates everything. It emulates the CPU, it emulates the GPU, it doesn't do any virtualization, that's why it you know, it really has a, um, that really takes a long time to copy that framework. Um, uh, it, it does, it doesn't do all that. It just, you know, uses its uh, restart. Well, let's see <laughs> if, uh, well, uh, three quarters of an hour, if we uh, end up with a more or less bootable booting system restarting the computer or if it just fails again uh, it might actually fail I'm not sure do the robust thing again plug and play support I suppose <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't like the time it's way ahead of its or when it uh, the sound blaster classic is detected ah now it does boot so this this was this was something that wasn't working and i'm really curious after the interface will it be mac like os x like i mean this yeah cool <laughs> oh this is actually quite cool um Okay. Uh, keyboard layout. No, no. Next, just just regular English. Wow, Dutch is even so. Uh, uh, UK, USA. Yeah, sure. No network connection. This really is very, very OS 9 like. Uh, no, it, this is the time zone, not Poland. A central European time, no. Middle European time. And that's not the time, but I guess that was. <laughs> <laughs> that was the date in time when it was uh, current, so probably will not like it. Multiple people can use this computer. Two types of account, local account, only be used on this computer, network account, no, local account. A local user account, yeah. So, Electo, full name. And a password. Okay. Skip login window and start. Let's start up. Yeah. And a password. 
this is very similar to uh, what you would do on a Linux box. Basic settings. Go ahead. I was on. I was able to complete all the tasks. Restart. So this is this interface is very similar to the classic shell of uh, uh, you know Mac OS nine or uh, Mac OS eight running on Intel hardware, <laughs> and I find that quite amazing. So do the verbose thing. Why not? I believe Mach and Rhapsody. Uh, it's. I mean that kernel is still in there in OS X. If you uh, if you go the uh, Hackintosh route, you can actually see that. Or do the verbose boot on uh, on OS X. It's possible to actually come up with this screen in OS X uh, as well. Now, ah, so localhost, Alecto, login, whoops, workspace manager, mailboxes, ah, this is and this in DVD. Demos. Chess application. Oh, wow. Cool. So, can I play chess? Yeah, I can. So it's it's really is meant for um, for a higher resolution display, <laughs> but this is just amazing. I really like this. It's a weird. Let me see. Yeah, this is about chess. A yellow box. This the yellow box is something that you actually uh, encounter in BOS as well, I believe. So let's quit it. And workspace manager. Um, so preferences app, text edit app, mail view app applications it really is very similar to and this is the drive local library web server applications so I mean it does only use a small portion of the drive this is probably my home directory uh, applications there's a clock app oh <laughs> and that's the clock it's a sort of accessory grab help viewer mail viewer preferences preview text edit there's yeah Starting text edit. It really is very similar to to the old, um, very similar to the old Mac S look, but then on 486 PC hardware. Wow. Don't save. Preferences app. Monitor. Open. Uh, right, color and resolution. Will it be possible to actually use color? Why not? 
doesn't doesn't really like it, does it? Uh, sound. Open. I don't think it'll it it works. It doesn't show any. Doesn't doesn't let any sound. But yeah, I mean it's it's interesting. Uh, show processes so some sort of. Yeah, but how do you turn it down? I guess go to the Apple sign. Print Manager Sticky Terminal. Sorry, Terminal. Probably in a window. Yep. Ver. So yeah, basically something that is very similar to uh, to Linux. Unix. Uh, really interesting to just use this. File merge interface builder, Java browser, project builder, interface builder. So yeah, probably this is some sort of uh, object-oriented uh, way to build an interface and then add code later on, but I'm not going to go in there, in, in, in that. Um, it's really curious how you turn turn off this system. Uh, <laughs> because you really don't seem to be able to um, show all. And what else do we have? We have clock. Let's turn off clock. Then we have terminal. Let's exit that. And then we have the workspace manager. Um, probably it's uh, Quick, no oh, quick time. Oh, there's more stuff. Quick time, open file. I'm very curious which version of Quick Time is is on here actually. Let's go to about Quick Time Player. Rhapsody developers release. Uh, so there's no real Quick Time. Oh wow. Let me see. Uh, workspace manager services, text edit, view in Java browser, file merge, grab, view viewer, tools. References, log out. Yeah, I guess logging out is the way to go. Yeah, I, I'll log out. And then I can shut down the system. Turn it off. Very cool. Very, very cool. I really like this.